Greetings! Here I am at the Gathering of Friends. This is an invitational board game convention, and I filmed a number of episodes of board games with Scott while I was there. You might be wondering, it's, where is everybody? Why is no one gathering? What's going on here? Something is weird. Everyone is gone. Mickey says it's 8.15 in the morning. 8.15 and no one's here. <sighs> I hate being a morning person sometimes. Hi there, and welcome to Board Games with Scott. This is a weekly video where I take a game and talk about it, and explain it, briefly review it, and let you know if it's something you might be interested in purchasing. This week I'm going to be talking about Turn and Taxis. Turn and Taxis is a game created by Karen and Andrea Seafarth. Andrea Seafarth created the game Puerto Rico, which has won many awards, is uh, well-renowned, so many gamers were really looking forward to this release. This is a lighter game than that. It was for two to four players, uh, ten years and up. It takes about an hour to play. Uh, the goal of the game is to uh, set up stations around Germany. You're delivering the mail, and so you're setting up stations around Germany, trying to set up your, your series of uh, wagons and things like that in order to make deliveries. Um, it ends up being a game about uh, taking cards, collecting cards, and connecting routes across the board. You're going to win the game if you are able to connect the most routes quickly before other players claiming various bonuses. This is a game with many different bonus payments that you get by collecting routes before someone else does. So, why don't we take a look inside the box and see what we get. Here's what you get in the game. You get a fairly small sized board, but it functions just fine. It's actually a very beautiful board. A um, number of people have commented on how nice the board looks. You get a number of, of stations per player that they'll be playing on the board, nice little wooden pieces. You have small chits, which are used when you achieve certain conditions on the board. Uh, you'll get these, these are victory point chips. You have some cards to represent your carts that you're using to make your deliveries and a card to represent what color player you are. There is a nice heavy-duty sturdy reference card that's got um, some rules in English and in German. And then these cards are the heart of the game. These cards are small cards. They have the names of different cities on the board on them. And these are the cards that you're going to be holding for most of the game and, and dealing with. And this is probably my biggest complaint with the game. Um, these cards are fairly small and thin. They're, they're very similar to the cards used in Ticket to Ride, but they're handled very heavily in the game, and there aren't really that many of them for the amount of use they get. So these cards show their wear very, very quickly. Uh, people are using them, and it's, it's regretful that the company didn't put these on bigger, more heavy-duty cards, for, exa for example, ones that could be put in larger card sleeves that uh, would allow them to have a longer life. So if this game sees a lot of play, you're going to see these cards get... Uh, to get uh, mussed up fairly quickly. So that's it for the components. You've got a, a rule book, and uh, that's really about it. So why don't we see how all of this works together in gameplay? Okay, so this is the board for turn and taxis. Now, what you're going to do during the game is you're going to attempt to get victory points, and you're going to do that in a number of different ways. You're going to do that by increasing the, the reach of your stations, by playing these stations on the board and taking these cards up top. And actually, the game end is triggered when someone takes this number seven station. You're going to get points for connecting different cities in a specific region. If you notice, the board is split up into a number of different colored regions. And there are small tokens beside each of those regions. You're also going to get points if you're the one that happens to be the first to get five, six, or seven uh, stations together in a row. So those are really your goals of the game. And you're going to gather these chits as the game goes on. And uh, by the end of the game, you'll, you'll figure out who got the most points by adding up the chits. Now, one thing people will confuse sometimes is the first cart you have to take is this cart with uh, number three on it. That's going to be worth two points at the end of the game. You're going to get that when you build a station line with three cities that are connected. When you build a station line with at least four cities connected, you can take this cart, which has three points. Now, don't, one, peop, one thing people confuse is that you don't get to add all these up. You're only going to get the points for the one that's on top. Once you've gotten the four, that enables you to then get the five, and the six, and the seven. And again, when someone takes a seven, that triggers the last round of the game. Now, the way the gameplay works is on your turn, you're first going to take a city card. Now, these are the cards 
and there's three of these cards for every city that you see on the board. And you're going to get to take one of these cards from the display and add it to your hand. The next thing you do is you play one card, and then if you have completed a route that you want to score, you can choose a score at that point and put down some of your different city markers, and that's going to enable you to get these bonus points. So on my turn, I could choose to take a card. I could take the Basil card, for example, then I could choose to play the Basil card in front of me. An idea that I need to get across to you is the, the concept of laying down your stations in order to connect these cities together. Now, if you look, these cities are connected by roads, and that's going to tell you uh, how you can play your cards. Uh, during your turn, you're going to have the ability to play one and sometimes two cards. So let's say I played the Zurich card. Now, Zurich is right here. Now, the next card I can play has to connect to Zurich. So I could play Basil card if I wanted. So I could play Basil here. Now this is creating a line, Basil to Zurich. Now the next card I play, I can play on either end of this line, but I can't play it in the middle. So for example, if I got the Freiburg card, I could play it on this side of Basil. And now my two endings are Freiburg and Zurich. And anything I play has to come off of one of those two. And so I might choose to play the Kempton card in a future round, which is on this side. And if I get the Carl Rule card, which is here, I could play it here. So now I have a chain of five cards, and that's what you're trying to do. Once you feel your chain is big enough, you can score your chain. And the number of cards in the route, one, it has to be at least three cards, but it can be more than that. And as the game goes on, you're going to want to complete longer and longer routes. Again, they all must connect to each other in order to play the cards. The way it works in scoring is you can do one of two things. You can either put down one of your houses in a city from each color represented. So I could choose to put a house in either Carrule or Freiburg. I could put a house in either Basel or Zurich. And I could put a house in Kempton. That would allow me to put down three of these stations. So I, I could choose Basel, I could choose uh, Freiburg, and I could choose Kempton. So that would allow me to place those three stations. The other option I have is I could place houses in all of the color, all of the stations of a single color. So I could say, well, I'm going to put a house in Basel and Zurich, but then I don't get to put any other houses. So if I were to do that, then I would put a station in both of these places, and that would be my play. So those are your two options after you complete a route. So it's either one, one in each color or all of them in a single color on the board. And there are times when you want to do one or the other. Uh, for example, there's a big area of gray here on the board. So if you play a lot of gray, you may choose, well, I'm going to put them in all the grays. On the other hand, there's some areas which have lots of different colors. So you could play a route with a lot of different colors and play a whole bunch of, of houses at once. And one thing to know, every house, every station you have left at the end of the game is minus a point. So getting rid of these is good. It's basically like getting points. One other thing to note, you must play a card at the end of every turn. Let's say here I had Carlsberg and Freiburg, which is here. And if all the cards I have are over on this side of the board in my hand, then what I have to do is I have to discard these cards, say bad words, and start my new route. So I'm starting back on this side of the board. So one thing that may end up happening is you have to lose a nice route because you didn't get a card that connects into it. And that's where the pressure luck element of this game comes in. You may want to make your route a little bit longer, a little bit longer, but if you don't have the cards in your hand when you're making that choice, you may decide, well, it's not worth it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just stop at this point and cash in my route rather than risk getting in trouble. When you claim a route, one thing you have to worry about is the number of cards you have left in the hand. You're only allowed to hang on to three cards after you claim a route. You can have as many cards as you want up until that point, but once you claim a route, then you have to discard down to just three cards. Now, the way these bonus tiles work is this one, for example, shows the two shades of green. And what that means is if you manage to play your stations on all three of those, then you get to take the top one. The top one is worth three, the next one down is worth two, the next one down is worth one, and then they're all gone. So the people who do it earlier are going to have a bigger advantage. Now because of the way that you score your stations in the game, you're not going to be able to get all of these three in a single go. And the game is actually designed that way. It's clever and frustrating at the same time. Because remember, you're either going to get to play stations in one from each color or all from one color. So you're either going to get to play those two or you're going to get to play those two you're not going to get to play all three. So it's going to take two routes in order to actually score that. The only exception to that is purple. Notice the purple has three of these cities, and all it takes is those three to get this purple chit. So you could actually claim these three in a single go. 
you could claim all three purples and get that. Also with the gray, the gray, which is a huge section of the board here, allows you to, you could claim them all in one go if you could manage to hook them all up through one big route. The other bonus chips in the game, as I mentioned earlier, are for seven, six, or five uh, length route. If you're the first one to complete a seven, you take the seven chip, and again, the next person gets the, the, a lower point chip. There are two other bonuses in the game. This bonus is for having a station in every country on the board, except for this main gray one. You don't have to worry about that. If you have it there, it's not going to hurt you, but it doesn't count towards this bonus. So for this bonus, you have to end up getting your stations all around the perimeter of the board. And again, as you get this, then you take the chip and the next person gets fewer. And this one point bonus is for the person who goes out, the person who causes the end of the game to happen. So now you understand the basic flow of the game, I need to talk about one last thing, and that's the special abilities. Each round of the game, you have, you can activate one of these four special abilities, which is going to make you more powerful. Remember, the basic flow of the game is you draw one card, you play one card, and then you score if you wish, and if you score, and you score a route equal to or bigger than the next highest card that you need, three, four, five, six, seven, then you take that. So if I have the three, and I make a route of size, size five, then I can't take the five because I need the four next. So I'll take the four and stack on top of the three. Then I'm trying to get bigger than that. But these characters let you actually break those rules. So the first person is the postmaster. The postmaster allows you to add two cards instead of one. When you start the game, you're actually going to start with no cards, and you must take the Postmaster route. Anytime you have no cards in your hand, you must take the Postmaster special ability and put two cards into your hand from the display. The next choice you have is the Administrator, and the Administrator lets you exchange all the cards. So if you pick the Administrator role, you dump all the cards, and then you put out six new ones. This is the, where the biggest part of the frustration of the game comes, because if you make plans ahead of time and you're watching and you're hoping for Zurich and Zurich finally comes up and you're excited because you've been planning on Zurich and the next player goes, oh, I'm going to flush him. <laughs> then you say many, many bad words because the card you want is gone. So I just learned, well, I'm not even going to look at those until it comes to my turn. So, it, so that's your second option. You can just choose to flush all the cards. Another option you have is to play two cards. So if you only take one card from the display and you don't flush them, then you can choose to play two cards onto your route instead of just one. The final special ability that you have involves the carts. Now remember the carts, you can only take, for example, the five cart after two things have happened. One, that you already have the four cart, and two, that you play a route that's at least five cards long. The cart right gives you the ability to take cart that's two higher than the route you just played. So let's say that I don't have the six. Let's say I have the three and I've gotten the four and I've gotten the five and six is my next one. I could play a route of four cards long and use the cart right as my special ability to take the six. And that's going to allow me to get the six more quickly. And these are worth different victory points. That three is worth two points, three points, five points, seven points, and ten points. So it is worth it to try and get these bigger cards. Otherwise, at the end of the game, you're going to be left out. The, trick, the tricky part of the game is that you can only use one of these abilities per round. Yes, it's nice to draw two cards, but it's also really nice to play two cards. And it's really great to grab a cart before uh, you actually have the, the length of route to do so. And flushing the cards is nice when you're not finding the cards you're looking for. It also makes everyone else say bad words. But you only get to do one of these actions every turn. So, returning to the flow of play with the special abilities taken into account. On your turn, the first thing you can do is you can look and decide to flush the cards and get six new ones. Then you can draw cards, you can draw from these, and actually you can also always draw the mystery top card if you don't like any of those six choices. Then you can draw one card, or you could use your special ability to draw a second card, assuming you didn't flush them. Then you can play one card, and if you haven't used a special ability up to this point, you could play a second card. Then if you claim and score a route, you put down some houses, and then you can take the cart that's equal to or less than that number, assuming you have all the carts before it. Or you can use the cart right to actually get a cart that's higher than the number of stations you played. Then you can score your route. Uh, for example, a three route will get you the three card. Then if you have the three card, a four route will get you the four card. Um, the cart right will let you take a number that's too bigger than what you just played, assuming that you have all the other carts up to that point. And again, when someone takes the seven 
the first seven cart, then that triggers the last turn of the game. And the way it works is each player gets an equal number of turns. So you need to remember who is the start player because then you'll know who plays last in the game. If the player who plays last in the game takes the seven, no one else gets a chance at it. If the start player, the person who played first in the game, takes the seven, then everyone's going to get one more turn uh, before the game ends. Remember, the game ends when someone claims the first seven cart card, or when one player plays all of their stations. At that point, you add up your bonus chips, you add up the number on your highest valued cart card, and you subtract the number of stations that you still have available. And that's how you determine who wins. Well, that's turn and taxis. What do I think about this game? The first time I played it, I was fairly frustrated with the game. I, I had tried to plan my moves ahead. I would look at the cards, figure out what I wanted to do, and then by the time it came around to me again, all the cards were, were gone that I was planning on. And I got very frustrated. Um, and I hear when I play it with other people that they express this frustration. The second time I played, I decided I was not even going to look at the card display until it came to my turn. That way I wouldn't be planning ahead, I wouldn't be hoping to get something, and I wouldn't end up being so frustrated. And you know what? I had a much better time the second time I played it. So my recommendation to you if you play this game is don't try to plan too far ahead. Wait until it's your turn, look at the card display, and then figure out what it is you'd like to do. This is a, it's a good game. I enjoy it. I'm going to be picking it up. I'll give it a, a good A-. Um, it, would be, it would rank higher if it wasn't for that planning ahead issue. That's the one frustration. But if you can leave that behind, you'll have fun with this game. Uh, so, with that, I will leave you from uh, here at the Gathering of Friends. Uh, this week's board game was Scott. If you want to see more of these episodes, head over to boardgameswithscott.com. So thank you for watching this week. I hope you decide to take your turn at the taxi soon. And uh, I will talk to you in another week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.